All right, so um, depending on the, um, the, what the range for elasticity of demand is, uh, we have different terms for how elastic it is. Okay, so if elasticity of demand is X, then we'll call it this type of elasticity of demand. Okay, so let's run through uh, the different ranges for what's considered, you know, perfectly inelastic, elastic, whatever. Okay, so ordering them from the least responsive to price changes to the most responsive to price changes, um, we have different categories of elasticity of demand, starting with perfectly inelastic demand, and this is what I showed you earlier. So, in perfectly inelastic demand, Right, quantity demanded does not move in response to a price change, right? So P1 to P2, quantity demanded is the same, okay? That's perfectly inelastic demand, okay? And if we were to do the uh, um, elasticity of demand formula, Bring this down. If we just look at the elasticity of demand formula, you have Q new equals Q old, right? Because they're both equal to QD. So what happens? The numerator goes to zero. Okay. So the this whole numerator goes to zero, which means the elasticity of demand equals zero. Okay, so if the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity, or the new quantity demanded is equal to the old quantity demanded, you have an elasticity of demand equal to zero, and that looks like a straight line. Okay, quantity demanded does not change with price. As price goes up, quantity demanded stays the same. As price goes down, quantity demanded stays the same. Okay. Perfectly inelastic demand does not change with uh, with price changes. Okay, what about inelastic demand? Just regular inelastic demand. So quantity demands quantity demand that changes, but only a little. So an inelastic uh, point on the demand curve that might be inelastic would be like going from here to here. Actually, this is probably it's probably bad, bad draw right there. Like going from here, this point down to here. If we were to draw a tangent line, like a line connecting those two points, um, it'd be relatively steep. Okay, this is a terrible drawing, and I apologize. But basically, let's do it with a straight demand curve. Okay. So if we had a demand curve that was slanted like this, and the price changed from here, let's say P1 to P2, demand isn't going to change that much. Okay. So this is the change in demand. That's a delta which means change in, that's your change in demand, it's going to be low, okay? So if you do the uh, elasticity of demand formula and the numerator, oh, sorry, the numerator is less than the denominator, then you're going to have an elasticity of demand less than one, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So this is our elasticity of demand formula. Okay. Remember that this whole thing is being divided by this whole thing here. Okay. So if change in quantity is less than the change in price, And we have to take the average, we have to divide them by the average, right? All 
right? So this is less than this, aka if the change in P1 over P2, or P1 minus P2, is greater than the change in Q1 minus Q2. This will be your delta P. And the, the Q1 should, should really be down here. Okay, but if the change in uh, quantity is lower than the change in price, then the numerator is less than the denominator. Okay, and if the numerator of a fraction is less than its denominator, we can say it's less than one. Okay, so that's where the inelastic demand comes from. So perfectly inelastic demand, if the price changes, quantity doesn't change at all. Regularly inelastic demand, just inelastic demand, has a higher price change than it does a quantity change. So if the price changes by a lot, quantity is only going to change by a little. That's what it means to be inelastic. Okay. Then we have unit elastic. Okay. If there's an X percent change in price, then de quantity demanded is going to change by X percent. That's what it means to be unit elastic. Okay. So often you'll see unit elastic demand is having slope of one at some particular point. Okay. So like the change from here to here is going to have a slope of close to one. Okay. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter, but, um, basically what we need is if we have if we have an equal percent change in quantity as we do a percent change in price, so I change this to an equal, so, oh, sorry, I change this, uh, I cannot type today. I change this to an equal sign, right? Then what happens? The numerator is equal to the denominator. So what happens when you have the numerator equal to the denominator? The elasticity of demand is equal to one. And we call that unit elastic. When the percent change in one, there's an X percent change in price, there's going to be a percent, uh, an X percent change in quantity demanded. Okay. Then we have elastic. So now we're on the other other side of things. So quantity demand the change is more than a uh, price change. Okay. So what might that look like? So imagine we had a graph that looks like this. Okay. You can have a small change in price. A large change in quantity. Okay. That's what it means to be elastic. Okay. A small change in price leads to a large change in quantity. Okay. I'm not going to go through these, each one of them, but then you just make um, uh, the you make this a less uh, a greater than sign. So then you have the numerator greater than the denominator, which means that e sub d is greater than one. Okay. And then finally, we have perfectly elastic demand. Okay. And this is going to come into play when you have what's called a perfectly competitive market, um, which we'll do later in towards the back end of the course. Um, but imagine we had a straight line demand curve, but it's straight horizontal, not vertical this time. Okay. You have price, you have quantity. Okay. So we have elasticity of demand going to infinity. What does it mean to go to infinity? That means the denominator is equal to zero. Okay. Divide the numerator by the denominator, it, the limit will go to infinity. Okay. If, if the denominator is equal to zero. So price is not going to change. Uh, quantity can change, but price will not never change. Um, essentially, what this is is like if you change your price from what was equilibrium to something below equilibrium, you're going to get all of the demand change. The 
the quantity demanded is going to go to infinity. Okay. But if you change it to something above equilibrium from this, you're going to the quantity demand is going to shift all the way to zero. Okay. So you're on a perfectly elastic demand curve. You're essentially consigned to one one price. Okay. P nu is always going to equal P old. I will actually show that equation this time. So if that's your formula and you have P nu equal P old, well then what happens? Well, as to see demand is going to equal this. Divided by zero, you divide by zero, elasticity of demand goes to infinity. Okay. So that's what it means to be perfectly inelastic or perfectly elastic. Okay, you have a horizontal demand curve. Okay. So perfectly inelastic, price does not uh, have any effect on quantity of demand. Perfectly elastic, you can't change the price at all. And if you do, even by a little, quantity of demand is going to either go to infinity or go to zero. Okay, depending on whether it's a drop in price or an increase in price. And then elastic, unit elastic, and, and inelastic. Um, you know, you can change for inelastic. If you change price by um, a lot, it's only going to have a little effect on demand, quantity demanded. Elastic, if you change price by a little, it's going to have a big effect on quantity demanded. And you need elastic, if you change price by a little, quantity demand is going to go by, is going to change by a little. If you change price by a lot, quantity demand is going to change by a lot. It's a proportional shift in uh, prices and quantity for unit elastic. Okay, so that um, that's that slide. And we'll move on to... Uh, other kinds of elasticity in a second, or sorry, we're moving on to revenue in a second, and then other kinds of elasticity.